All right, guys, welcome back to uh, World Building with DM Dave. Last time we started building a uh, dungeon using a Dice and Logos map. Uh, we imported it into Dungeon Draft and we started, uh, uh, we resized it so that we can trace around it. So that's where we are today. You can see on my screen here, I've already got the map pulled up and all we gotta do is start tracing, okay? Uh, if you didn't see the last video, make sure to check it out on my YouTube site. And of course, as always, be sure to like and subscribe. All right, so let's start tracing this bad boy. We've got it already loaded in here. We're gonna go out of our settings and we're gonna go to the design tab right here. <clears throat> and the design tab is gonna give us a building tool, a wall tool, portal tool, caves, pattern shapes, and roofs, okay? What we're gonna want is the building tool. And what's cool about the building tool is it both creates uh, walls and floors at the same time, so you don't have to do them a la carte. So we'll click on that. Uh, you've got different shapes. You can edit the points directly. You've got the design that you want for the floor. You've got the designs you want for the wall, and you can even change the color of the wall if you want. Uh, since this is kind of like a cave system with some natural dwellings, uh, what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to select uh, let's give this, I think this is the cave floor here, and I'm going to pick the cobble version, and what we're going to do is zoom in, okay, and I'm going to start outlining sort of my basic shapes here, okay, and then all of the funky stuff we're going to create with the cavern tool next. All right, so now that we've got our building tool out, you can see I've also stuck it with square, but if I had a round room, I could do circle, if I had weird designs, I could uh, draw the points itself, but really all I need is square right now. And all you gotta do with Dungeon Draft is just click and drag it. And you can see, boom, it creates right there. And we can kind of check it how good that looks by going to our trace image and reducing the opacity. And you can see this is what the final image is gonna look like. You can see that it's got a nice little faint shadow, got kind of a rough uh, wall there, which I think works pretty well for our cavern. And then of course the cavern floor itself. I wouldn't worry about all this stuff on the outside here. We can get rid of that later if we want to. But for now, this is what the inside of the map, what your players are ultimately going to see uh, when you import this into a favorite VTT of your choice, like Roll20. All right, so I'm going to turn the opacity back up, go back to my building tool, and just keep outlining shapes until I've got kind of all the basics. You can see there's little nubbins poking out. I'm going to go back and retrace those in a minute. But for now, I think we should be good. Uh, one thing Dyson has done with this map, too, that I think is worth pointing out is there are some areas that are underneath other areas. So it's a multi-tier map. You see that a lot in older designs. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come back to those um, later and create them on a separate layer, which uh, Dungeon Draft has a really cool function of. And we will use, um, let's see, where's a good break? point for that let's let's say like this door here like we'll come back to it there all right so i'm going to draw the rest of my nice uh, square shapes here remember i don't want to enter this room because we're going to have to draw that on a different layer uh, i'm going to get all this here just keep drawing all that it's okay to go past doors because we can draw in walls later on you know what actually let's do this um what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out all the square rooms because as you can see, those are all lower than the cavern levels. And then we'll build a layer over top of it using Dungeon Draft's layer tool. It's going to be pretty cool. So let's just keep on drawing out our square shapes. Don't worry about going past um, those doors there because we'll add them back in. But really just kind of outline all of your basic shapes here in Dungeon Draft. Uh, Dungeon Draft's a pretty cool tool. I think it costs, uh, we're going to save this for our circle tool. I think it costs like $25 for a lifetime license. Uh, easily worth it because you can use it for commercial stuff. Granted, I'm not doing this commercially because I don't own the rights to this map. But um, if I wanted to do something commercially, there's no friction at all. Like they allow you to do it. Okay, let's see. I've done most of our, oh, there's a few more over here, but these are going to be on our upper layer, so we will leave those for now. Let's add in our little circle here. So I'm going to grab my circle tool and let's see, how do I want to do this? Uh, that didn't look good. Hit control Z and you can get rid of stuff. Let's, um, all right, so I'm going to grab my 
my point tool here. This lets me design points and kind of like click and it'll create a random shape. So if I wanted to create like uh, octagon, for example, all I got to do is do this boop, and it makes an octagon. But I don't want an octagon because there's no octagon on this map. <laughs> but what I want is a little circle shape that fits directly into there. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to turn off my snap. So if you look down here, you can turn off your grid, snap, and any lighting if you had it in there. You've also got a zoom tool, your layer tool, and um, a tool to compare your levels. I'm going to turn off snap. I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to start doing them manually following Dyson's line to get kind of a rough circle here. I'm going to go a little bit over, and then reconnect, and boom. You can see that it's automatically added it in there and it lays over Dyson's perfectly. Pretty cool. Let's turn snap back on. Next odd shape on this one, I've got this guy over here. So what I can do is I can actually go to my edit points tool. You can see that when I highlight over it now, it shows all my, my um, points that are already there. If I click on an area that doesn't have a point, it'll create one. So I'm going to create two points here and then I'm going to drag this guy here. Let's go ahead and make one more point here. And there we go. Let's zoom out. All right, so that is our under layer. I think that looks pretty strong. Um, let's see, I gotta draw in some walls now. Because remember, we I drew over all the other ones here, but those walls are still there. Now I have a choice, I can either snap them perfectly to the grid, or I can do them like Dyson does, where they kind of float in the middle. Personally, I like it. I, I like to do it on the grid. I think it's a lot easier and it makes more sense when you're you're playing. This is a very old school method of putting the doors kind of in the middle there. But in a game like 5th edition, which is very much driven by... Actually, you know what? We should probably do this too. Well, anyways, in a game like 5th edition that's very much driven by uh, turn-based combat, I think it makes more sense to have um, nice, solid, grid-shaped rooms with only just a few oddballs there and then so it doesn't look like totally robotic. Um, you can see we've got this here, which I didn't do. So let's go ahead and do that. I think that's a good idea because it does have a staircase leading down. I, you know what? No, no, no. We'll do that. We'll do that on the um, on the next one. We'll have a hint of it there, and then we'll put the uh, the curve in there. So this will. I'll put a staircase leading up here. Actually, let's edit our points and bring this up a little bit. Okay. We'll come back to that. But I'm going to grab my wall tool now. Wall tool just says edit points <clears throat> over and under. So if I wanted it to be over and I drew it like this, you can see, oops, <laughs> well, maybe it won't be over. It would well normally be over, but I guess not. that's not the case with this. Okay. Anyways, like if you wanted to tuck in the walls that you create with your wall too, with another wall, you kick it on the over. I want them to be under. Also, if you wanted to turn off shadow, you could do that. And then you have your five wall designs here. I'm going to keep it on cobble to keep it consistent. And draw, close off a wall there. Let's, uh, I think we'll do the close off there, create kind of like a little closet deal. We'll do that. I think that, no, you know what? I like hallways to have branching areas. So let's do this, this. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, I'm using this for my own purposes. Um, Dyson probably doesn't care <laughs> what I'm doing. So um, we're just making it look cool. I'm just going to draw in all my walls. And that, I think, is good for everything that I want to have on this layer. All right, next up we need some doors, right? So we're going to go to our portal tool. Portal tool is going to let you open a whole bunch of doors. If, I'm going to, if I were to add in my own lighting through this, I could, you know, make it so they block like or don't block like. Like if I wanted a window to shine through. <clears throat> I'm not sure what the anchor does. <laughs> I haven't used it yet, so excuse my, excuse my ignorance on that. And then if I want to switch the direction the door faces... Um, I can click 180. Um, I'm thinking there's some probably some cheap wooden doors all through this complex. I'm going to grab this one. I like this one because it has little nubbins that sticks out. It makes it obvious that there's a door. So later when I go in to draw dynamic lighting using roll 20, you can still see that there's a door there. 
And what you'll do is once I've got your door selected, you can see it automatically kind of fits into place. Like if it couldn't fit somewhere, like it won't highlight, right? But since I drew everything kind of at a nice, like on the grid, oh, I'm gonna save real quick. Remember, save a lot with Dungeon Draft. It, they, it will crash on you <laughs> and you'll lose hours of work. It does not have an autosave feature in it yet. Not trying to diss it, but it's like the one drawback. But anyways, um, got my doors here. So let's go ahead. I'm going to have this one here. I think that's a good place. Um, I like to have it facing the direction the players are most likely to encounter it. So they're going to be coming down from here, I'm guessing. I want to have like these little nubbin parts sticking out. Um, and I'm going to keep doing that until I got all my doors. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I like them like that. There we go. All right. Let's go ahead and save again. Scroll out, see what we got here. Remember, you can frequently check by going to your trace image and reducing the opacity. And you can see this is starting to come into to being with what we want. All right. Uh, just a couple more things, and that'll be the end of this video. Let's. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and add this in and then just duplicate it in the other one so I have a nice kind of... Ref um, <clears throat> overlaid. So let's go, I'm going to go back to my building tool. Uh, I'm going to draw my point thing and I'm going to show you how to make a curve real quick. So if you click on the point that you've got there, like this, this is how you do a curve. First click on your starting point, then click at your ending point, but hold the shift key and that'll turn the line purple. Once you click on the shift key, then you can drag it so that it looks weird <laughs> yeah I think I need a little bit wider bow on this or a shorter one yeah all right so let's do this instead I'm gonna go here then here then to here and click my shift and draw it up from there there we go now we got it same with this click it to there so it's nice and round that's it and I've drawn my little round area there my stairs are going to be coming down from there. I've already got the door in place. Uh, I think one last thing I need on this lower level. Let's, um, the stairs goes down. And that's about it. So why don't I, I think in the next video, I'm going to draw this cavern here and show you how to add caverns to your stuff so you can connect them to your, your normal stuff. I think we're pretty good on that, but I want to make kind of everything that's a lower level uh, kind of connect to this. So that is a clear demarcation between what's an upper level, which goes this way, and what's a lower level, which goes down this way. All right, all. So that's how you use Dungeon Draft to add some simple areas. We also went ahead and added some basic walls and doors. Pretty simple stuff. On our next video, I'm going to show you how to draw caverns, and we're going to hopefully finish up this uh, lower level of the two levels that are on this Dyson map. As always, make sure that if you like what you see, hit the like button, be sure to subscribe, and uh, check me out too at patreon.com uh, forward slash DMDave. Anyways, see you later.